Once again, the LED filament industry has evolved to the next step, and this time, instead of using the big antique type lamps, but with the sort of small filaments normally found in fixtures like with lamps like these, should I say, <coughs> they've decided to compete directly with the big, huge, zigzaggy filaments of the antique fixtures and produce huge, long LED filaments. And I have to say, this lamp looks very good. I'm going to plug it in and show you the power of it. It says it's six watt. So each of these long filaments is one watt. Oop, little mini avalanche here of components. So here's the power meter. Plug it in. This is where it swamps the camera out completely. It's not as flicky as it looks. I keep saying this. It's just one of these things that the iPad shows flicker, but there is flicker on it. So it starts off at 7.3 watts, and after a while, once it's warmed up, that starts creeping down. Is the iPad going to compensate for the flicker? Is it going to... I can I cheat it into like saying no? Is it going to no? It's not. It's just not going to compensate at all, is it? <sighs> anyway, carrying on with the epileptic flicker in the background. With it uh, running, it's a nice golden light. They're not super bright. They've spread the one watt right along the filaments. And initially, I thought they've probably just spaced the LEDs out. But then you look at it, and you can just see a hint of LEDs, and they look very closely spaced. The power starts about 7.3 watts. Then. Uh, after it's warmed up after a while, which it's taking a while to do, it starts creeping down. And uh, I took a after I left it running for a while and took a thermal image of it. See the the power is actually starting to creep down now. The current, incidentally, is approximately 32 milliamps. And if you consider that the configuration they've got here is three fil three filaments in parallel up and then three filaments in parallel down. That means it's roughly 10 milliamps per filament, which does account for the sort of lower intensity. I'll just tuck that out of the way so it's not too bad. So um, let's see how the power is doing. Power is now down to 7 watts, and it will continue down to about the, the 6 watt region. Anyway, uh, let's get rid of the flicker at the moment. I took a thermal image of the lamp, and it showed that it's not excessively hot, it's about 34 degrees uh, and certainly I, I took it out the whole draft, been running it for a while and it was just comfortable to hold, it wasn't, you know, the whole thing was cool for something that's running at 6 watts, It was the whole thing was just surprisingly cool, it's really quite weird and it made me think that this is possibly based around the same circuitry uh, given that the power crept down as uh, this, one of these early lamps I took to bits where it was quite unusual, the component being used. They had an inrush limiting resistor, they had a rectifier, they had a smoothing capacitor, and then they had a component that was basically acting as an analogue, dual analogue regulator, but with the two of them in parallel. And it was basically, with a couple of resistors, they set the current, and it would limit the current to that, a maximum level, but as this heated up, it would then nudge the current back. So these lamps all the same characteristic. When you turned them on, they started really bright, much brighter than their normal running brightness, and then crept back slowly to their equilibrium point, which is quite neat. It works very well. And I get the feeling that that's what's in here. So... I was trying to count the LEDs in it, and I looked through, I got my welding mask, and the glass was too dark, and I tried taking photos, it just, it wasn't clear at all. So I ended up uh, cheating a little bit, let's uh, unplug this and get out of the way. I decided, well this is a good way to test, if it is the very simple, either capacitive dropper or that resistive circuitry, if I get a power supply, get my quick test up, and I basically put a capacitor in series of the lamp. So I put a very, very low value capacitor in. This is a, a 22 nanofarad capacitor and I stuck it in live. And I got a bit of wire, here it is, and stuck it in neutral. Inappropriate colour, but that's all right. Screwed the lamp in, it actually twisted it around the lamp. Uh, and then touch the tip to the uh, capacitor. And that basically acted as an auxiliary current limiter and that made the lamp glow very dimly. And by doing that, I was able to take a picture of it uh, with uh, the iPad and then uh, print that picture off. I should say, you know, that's still a visually, it's quite nice. It's just those glowing filaments, but uh, I couldn't measure how much power this was taking. It was minute. Uh, I can measure how much power that's taking. Uh, let's measure how much power that's taking. Sort of RMS-ish value. Let's turn this down to 
AC current, let's do it 20. Oh, let's see, 200 milliamps. We'll stick this in the 200 milliamp range. And we'll stick it in series with the capacitor and the base of that lamp, noting that this is all sort of live at mains voltage. Oh, it's like, it's ridiculous. It's less than half a milliamp. Yet those LEDs are all glowing very visibly. That's quite nice. Uh, change it back from the current position and turn it around to my most favourite continuity position. Right, so uh, I'll also, uh, before I go any further, I'm just going to discharge that capacitor because there's no discharges to cross it and it may just be 22 nanofarad, but it's enough to make a little spark and give you a zing. So having a... That's ascertained that it's not any sophisticated electronic ballast, I don't think. I mean, we're going to open this up, obviously. Uh, which is a shame, because it's one of the most expensive I've bought so far. But, uh, you know, science. So here's the photo I took. And it was enough that I could see the individual LEDs, so I marked them off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then a big line for 10. There are 45 LEDs, and if you consider it's roughly 3 volts per LED, it's 135 volts per filament. And they've got two in series, so that gives 270 volts. So these ones are aimed at the 220 to 240 volt uh, industry where, you know, our peak, uh, the peak voltage in the capacitor is going to be around about 330 volts. <coughs> um, for 110 volt lamps, I guess, uh, they could, I'm not sure how much margin there'd be. Uh, 110, let's hold, what's the peak voltage 110? 110 volts times 1.41. The peak of the sine wave, the capacitor will be charged up to 155 volts, 135 volts across the LEDs, plus the voltage would vary slightly, uh, quite significantly actually, across the, the string of so many LEDs. Uh, that's going to be in the region, yeah, that's, that's, you should be able to use parallel clusters of these in 110 volts. Not that you can get these particular LEDs uh, filaments um, on their own yet, but I'm sure they, they must appear in the lamps. or. Maybe they'd even just use little boost circuits. So, um, let's... Oh, well, here's the listing I bought it from. This one cost £7.26 from China. Which is, a, uh, you know, definitely, you know, things like this are three or four quid. Uh, it's quite a jump up, because, but it is the latest thing. Uh, and it came from Dane Rajan. D-H-A-N-E understroke Rajan. R-A-J-A-N. But if you look up vintage E27, you will find tons of these styles of lamps, not just in this, the filament version, but the, uh, the LED filament, the traditional tungsten filament, and also the clusters, what they call trees, the clusters of small LEDs, quite attractive lamps. But uh, let's open this up in the usual way, shall we? Since we've discovered that in the past by opening up similar lamps, by nibbling at the metal. I've not had a lamp break in my hand yet, but there's always that opportunity. Electron Update has had a lamp break in his hand. I don't think he showed that in video, though. The sticky plaster that he had on was uh, very prominent. I think he'd thought that the lamp... This is where the cheap Chinese snips come in. I'm not going to use my precious Xeron ones for this. I think he'd uh, thought that the lamp was plastic, because some of them it's very hard to tell whether it's glass or plastic. And uh, he lost the bet, and it turned out to be glass, and uh, when he used unreasonable pressure on it, as we do, it's the best way to open these things. Well, not this particular one. Well, maybe. Uh, we might not get there at some point, but it's opening so far. Yeah, but uh, that lamp broke in his hand, and uh, yeah, he was uh, sporting uh, wound dressings for a while. Fortunately, all engineers have this amazing facility called Auto Repair. Uh, yeah, look at all the cuts in my hand at the moment. I was doing just something wonderful. Uh, I was removing old uh, chunks of, of what I believe is asbestos. So um, lots of investigation, lots of getting the correct disposal equipment and paper overalls, dust masks, and very careful uh, controlled removal. But unfortunately, it was in the uh, vicinity of very sharp quartz rough cast. Uh, so I just wanted to get the, a few wee bits out of the way before some work gets done in the garage. And that's why I'm all cut, because occasionally bits came off suddenly and the quartz is very sharp. So not much of a circuit board in here. This is already looking quite interesting. 
asbestos. There's various types of asbestos. Uh, this one was like, I think it may have been asbestos Lux, which is, which is a fair low content, but I just played safe and just got the full full on kit and I may send a sample away but just to make sure before I get it all properly disposed of. Nasty stuff, really. Uh, so what have we got here? This is different. For a first start, I'm not seeing a smoothing capacitor. I guess that's why there was ripple. Really, I'm not seeing an awful lot, in fact. This is very, very devoid of circuitry. I'm thinking that this looks like it's some dedicated current regulating component. CYT1000B. MB1OS, that's just a rectifier. And the power, you know, from is going straight into that, and that's really it. CYT one thousand B, and I reckon I'm going to check that right now and see if there's any information on it. And the internet wins again. I mean, how did we ever do without it before? So the CYT one thousand B is a constant current regulator, I see, and it's got the thermal protection built in as well. So that if the temperature goes too high, it'll start nudging itself down. But you basically set the current with just one resistor. So here's the basic circuit. Uh, there are other versions. They can You can put a capacitor in series as well. And also, and they kind of missed a trick here. They could have done it in this one. You can put a capacitor directly across the LEDs. And in this case, all they needed to do was tack an uh, electrolytic between this connection and this connection. And it would have added smoothing across the LEDs. But as it is, they've got none, which is why it's a wee bit choppy. Although, strangely not as choppy as I would have thought. I wonder if there's a bit of persistence in the phosphors. But all they need is that uh, resistor, and I was looking for the resistor on top, but the resistor is actually tucked underneath uh, the circuit board. And it's just basically, um, it's basically just under this area here, just a little surface mount resistor, about 12 ohms, that sets the current in this uh, to uh, match these LED strings, and that's it. So that's just the regulator component. I'm guessing maybe there's a bit of thermal coupling to the other side. I'm not, not sure about that. I, I don't want to pull it off any further because I quite like this lamp as it is and want to try and salvage it. But the circuitry is uh, very simple. It's the bridge rectifier with the mains in here. They've basically just, they've, you know, they've got the lead coming off from the side of the E27 holder going onto one leg and the other lead from the back of the lamp going onto the, uh, the other AC input. The DC output, one leg just goes straight up to the uh, filaments. The other leg... Uh, Hold on, let's see, the, what would it be? That would be the negative goes to the LED filaments. The positive actually runs around here to this uh, component here where it's connected to... Oh, have they drawn that? Hold on a second, hold on a second. They've drawn the rectifier wrong. This happens a lot. The rectifier is wrong. OK, the LEDs are connected to the positive and the negative then comes round to this uh, IC where it basically goes on to the tab. They're, they're not even using the middle pin in this because the middle pin is connected to the tab. Uh, and then it's just between the tab back, there must be a ground plane in the back, a sort of heat dissipation plane because that's what the resistor is connected to between the back, between that and the output. Uh, and then it's just the LED, the, should I say the ground, and then it's the LEDs. So that, that's very, very simple, really simple circuit. So yeah, it's it's neat. I, I really like these long filaments. It, the light it comes, gives off is a nice diffused golden glow, but I will say that there, it projects slight shadows in the vicinity because of the glass core up the middle. Uh, having said that, and the fact that that's maybe why these ones are mounted at a sort of angle to actually try and circumvent that, but in this case, they've been going for the zigzagged up and down sort of uh, retro look of big long filaments, so they've not done that. It's a really nice lamp when lit, so yes, lots of interesting stuff coming from China, and interesting, interest, it's just so little circuitry, it's just amazing, isn't it? It's really impressive. Still flickering away merrily, but only to the camera, not to me. Uh, so it's been on for a while, and it's dropped from the 7.3 down to 5.3 watts. It's dropped a couple of watts, just purely as it warms up. Uh, and the other difference is that now um, I've put it back together, but I've put a bayonet cap base in it. So much more handier than uh, the Edison screw for this place, because it's all bayonet cap holders around here. But yeah, I kind of like this. I do like the long LED filaments. I wonder what the next step's going to be. I wonder if they'll do sort of curved or, you know, other styles of these should be quite interesting to see.